Wow, this is extremely overwhelming. Um, a huge thank you to all of you for inviting me here today and wish you all a very happy Independence Day. So, not very long ago, about four years to be exact, um, I attended my first and last Model United Nations as a delegate. Um, the power of this community always made me want to be a part of it, but I just was never as good as you guys. Um, and clearly, uh, I hope to be inspired by all of you today um, with your amazing skills. Um, so speaking here especially is an honour and literally something I never imagined and I hope with whatever little time I have, I leave you all with something really to think about to change. Um, after the really, really overwhelming introduction by Ms. Um, I have realised that most of my speech has been taken away. So this is going to be shorter uh, and you guys don't have to listen to me for too long. And so I've been told that there are people from countries across the globe here. And this time's conference is focusing very closely on sustainable development of our planet. And its purpose makes me elated. The exposure and the understanding that you all are receiving is going to be an extremely amazing opportunity because I, at that age, never had the exposure to the sustainability development goals. I didn't even know what they meant. And um, I think this is the best way to start out as a young change maker. My parents taught me that if you are born with a silver spoon, a steel spoon, or even a plastic spoon, you are born with the privilege, and hence you are responsible. And your responsibility is to scoop up that privilege and give it to someone else who doesn't have it. I was extremely triggered by the water crisis that our country faced in the year 2015. It was one of India's most pressing issues, and it still is today. So before I continue, I'd like to ask all of you a very simple question. Have any of you ever wondered how much water you use on a daily basis? Has anyone ever wondered that? Put your hands up. That's a couple of hands. I'm glad to see that. And do you know where that water comes from? Does anyone know where it comes from? That's even fewer. So I'd like to introduce you to some people who barely get enough water to drink every day and moreover are struggling, walking miles in fighting systems to obtain this resource that we, barely consume, that we easily consume without even moving a finger. The two biggest factors that cause this uneven distribution of resources is the exploitation of water by the privileged and of course climate change. To me, it feels like our negligence and wants are fulfilled at the cost of other people's lives, almost as if we were killing them. And I'm not really surprised when they say that human existence is parasitic. The smallest of the ways in which we waste water every day account largely to this resource running scarce. And my research in this field led me to understand the huge gap that lies between the water procuring and the consumption habits in both urban and rural areas. And honestly, this is the only research I ever did, which is probably why I could never make it to MUNs like you guys. And in this process of reading, there was something that completely shocked me and Hussefa shared. 14 million liters of water is wasted every year simply in the water that we leave behind in glasses at restaurants. And this highlights one of the several trivial ways in which we waste water. Leaving the tap running unnecessarily, taking long showers, drinking a few sips of water from a plastic bottle and throwing away the rest are just some of those ways and I have barely scratched the surface. So I started discussing this with people around me and trying to call for action, but in vain. People told me to focus on my studies and said that all this could wait, but I could see things turning bleak. The planet was falling terribly sick and definitely wasn't going to wait for me to get a degree, a job, or have kids, and then finally scream, Kavita, now I'm starting to degrade, so please come and save me. 
So stuck amidst all of this, as a 15-year-old, the most positive decision that I could take was to raise my voice for this issue. And that led to the birth of my initiative, Why Waste? It wasn't easy, mind you. I had friends mocking me saying, why are you wasting your time with why waste? And most of them would just be like, oh, we're too young to come up with solutions for problems. But the intensity of this issue was more than enough to keep me going. And I wanted to do something to help change, make a difference, no matter how big or small it was. And soon enough, I learned that you're never too young to change because sometimes your voice is all that you need and your words are all that matters. So I started visiting restaurants, most of which were, mind you, reluctant to take advice from a 15-year-old. Back then, I made it my goal just to convince a few restaurants around me and to start, just to convince a few restaurants around me to start taking action to prevent the wastage of water. So the goal was about 10. Today, I am really proud to share that Why Waste is an international organization that provides simple solutions to solve the global water crisis. With our optimistic approach to water, our key initiative, Glass Half Full, has today spread to over one lakh restaurants across this country and several more globally. Thank you. And the most beautiful part of this initiative, honestly, is that it's living a life of its own. Um, it has helped us induce an optimistic mindset towards water and it saves 50%, guys, 50% of the water that was being wasted earlier, so that's half. And it wasn't an easy win, mind you. It took us months of understanding and convincing to achieve this result. Our concepts are open sourced and although they are trademarked, we're really, really proud to see governments, corporations, schools, um, cities as a whole uh, take up these concepts and make it an important part of their change. And really this taught me that the most important part of being a change maker is to let your ideas belong to the world. And it also taught me that your capabilities lie beyond your capacity to believe in them because I never thought that 10 could go from, it could go from like a 10 to a lakh. And of course, all of this would have been impossible without the army of waterpreneurs. That's what I like to call them, waterpreneurs. Beside me, it is beautiful and overwhelming for me how the team, this is a very small part of my amazing team, has really come together to so selflessly work for a better world. And they inspire me, honestly. And together, we have been able to save 4 million liters of water from being wasted and impacted 2 million lives. And this number is growing every day. So thanks to these efforts, I was lucky enough to be exposed to and have had the opportunity to be a fellow at some phenomenal organizations from across the globe, including Facebook, Ashoka, Kids Rights, Global Changemakers, Change.org, Change and IKEA Foundation, to name a few. And on this journey, I met and interacted with young people from every corner of the world, working on aspects of, of the sustainability development goals and problems that I never even knew existed. And I'd love to share the story of two of these young people really quickly. Isabel, just 16 years old from Brazil, who is empowering girls of color from backward communities to come out, find a voice, get the education that they need to move forward in life, and really step up. And the most fascinating thing that she has done is help girls almost a decade older than her get job placements. And I really have no idea how she does it. We all need to learn from her. And second, Matt, now 22, who hails from an immigrant family to the United States, started the March for Our Lives movement to fight against gun violence. He risks his life every single day, speaking up for victims and their families. And I've barely scratched the surface talking about the amount of brilliant work and movements being led by youth. However, this is not enough. The SDGs are too many and too vast for a small chunk of population to be fighting for. The community of change makers is very small. People say that change is the only constant. 
But I think now this world is in the constant need of change makers. With this thought, every single day, as I grew as a change maker, I began empathizing more with problems around me. And even though I had the passion and zeal and I wanted to solve each and every one of them, I knew I couldn't do it alone. Inspired by the ideology of everyone a change maker, I launched Lead Young at Schools, an initiative aimed at empowering young students to take up problems that they are passionate about. And we do this by telling them stories of other young people from around the world who are just like them, who, are, who come from places just like they have and inspire them and motivate them to really break stereotypes and overcome adversities to do their bit to change the world. It highlights the fact that it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are or how old you are or even what you do. If you have a solution to a problem, you have to implant it now. And I'm really, really happy to share that this initiative has reached over 600 schools across the country and impacted 2.5 million students. And I'm really looking forward to all of you taking this to your schools. When you are born, your life is like an empty canvas. The colors you choose and the strokes you paint describe your choices and paths in life. And in the end, the painting defines your journey. So choose the most impactful strokes and the beautiful colors and make sure that picture is worthwhile. Live to be a memory in someone's head and not on a 128 GB device. And I know that if you are here today, you are someone who wants to leave your mark in the world who wants to have a story that inspires, that will be remembered, a story that changes the world. And if each of our story becomes a change-making story, no one is stopping us from achieving the SDGs together. The world needs us now. Our parents aren't going to live to see the end of the world, but we are. Change always seems impossible until it's done. There's a million reasons not to do something, but there is only one reason to do it. And it is your choice to find that one reason. Use those amazing research and policy making skills that each of you I know in this room have. Bring them to the bigger picture and come join us in changing the world. It can be as simple as starting in your own community. You never know how far that can go. I mean, I certainly went from barely 10 restaurants to a lakh, so nothing is stopping any of you guys. Change clearly and most definitely starts at home. The biggest success of this conference would be to bring to life every single resolution passed in your committees, to get everyone involved and to have each of you pick that one problem or that one thing you've always wanted to change. Collaborate, go back and begin now. Let's be the Gen S. The energy here assures me that we are building the future. The power and magnitude of impact and influence a young activist brings to this world only makes me understand that if one young person is able to turn this world upside down all by themselves, it looks to me that all the youth of this world together can really turn the world the right side up. Thank you, friends. It was an absolute honor to be here. And before I end, I would like to leave you with a quote that I absolutely live by. If everyone is a change maker, there is no way that a problem can outrun a solution. We are the youth. We have the ideas. We have the potential. No one listened to us, but now, they don't have a choice because that's how strong our voices are and they just get stronger if we get together. Once again, thank you very much for inviting me here. It was an absolute honor to speak in front of all of you and I wish you, I wish you all tons of luck for the next three days of your conference and future journeys of change ahead. Thank you so much.